So our very first chaos has officially dropped. And I'm saying that because Fang's Lost Chapter has come out. And holy moly, man, is that a... Oh, that is a chaos right there. That was a that was a chaos. Like, that was rough. That's That stuff was rough. Um, the Duel Sahagans come back in, worse than ever. Uh, in the chaos stage, they are resistant to... Um, let me see if I can name it off the top of my head. Um, initial brave down, sap, poison, and <clears throat> stuns. Yeah, they're resistant to stuns. So, hey, if you built this magical man up, <clears throat> yeah. Um, they also resist the new things that Vincent does with, uh, you know, the sap that he gets from his, um, his EX. So it's, it's really funny to see that they just nerf these two for the next event. As they just released them. But hey, it can still be done. Uh, Cloud's still a heavy hitter. Uh, but with the release of Fang's last chapter, we also got Fang's EX Plus, as well as her level 70 Awakening and rework, alongside of Titus's level 70 Awakening and EX Plus. Titus is not going to rework as he got a prior rework before. Uh, so let's actually start off with Titus. So. All Titus got was a level 70, as mentioned before. Uh, he is C65, is a two-hit single-target HP attack that extends his buffs by two turns. Nice. Really nice. Uh, he has another option of uh, shooting off some attacks, um, <clears throat> as well as extending all of his buffs by two turns, which is really nice because, as we know, Quick Hit only, su uh, only supplies his frame buff for three turns and does not supply it in the plus version but that also is now mitigated because in his ex plus form um we're just gonna go over basically what the ex plus does in general so in general what the ex plus does is it increases the max overflow of uh energy range to 150 uh, percent 120 will be first started when it first uh is plus like in no limit breaks like mine is now um and now, when you use his EX at two out of three limit breaks, he can, he actually gives himself two turns of his frame buff. That is incredible uh, because that helps extend Titus exponentially. Um, the fact that he now has two other methods of keeping his frame buff alive is great because the, the problem with Titus beforehand was that he would consistently, you would have to reset up this new, this frame buff of his with quick hit. Uh, you'd have to make sure that they're debuffed and everything, which you still do. You still want to make sure they're debuffed with slash. But now you don't have to worry about dropping so much max brain, wasting quick hit just to refresh it, um, and so on and so forth. And with the his EX at two out of three max EX plus, he gets access to an HP attack plus plus, which doesn't do any more damage, doesn't do any more hits, it just gives an overflow of 120%, which is actually pretty nice. Uh, yeah, uh, Titus's HP attack plus was already pretty solid as it was. It was a good option to unleash some more attacks and everything. So, yeah. Um, so that's pretty much it. At max, he just gets 150% overflow, uh, some attack and max break increase uh, off, of his, off of one limit break, and uh, he gets the his EX now supplies, the his frame buff which i forget what it's called um by two turns so fairly simple but the thing is is how does it make tita's function it makes tita's function much better like i said before the option to actually increase um that stat that frame buff by other means and keeping it alive a lot longer is much better in tita's favor uh it means that you don't have to constantly oh i gotta use a quick hit to get that back up oh but i need to press for damage quick hit still doesn't do HP damage, you know, things like that. <coughs> so it's really nice to have this option there for Titus. So uh, it extends everything that Titus does as well. He's very turn efficient. Titus has always been very turn efficient, considering that his quick hits don't take up turns when they're in the plus variants. So you can pop off a quick hit while it's in its plus form. So you can buff up his brave. So he's hitting, you know, making sure he's capping out in the highest amounts. And his quick hits have 12 total usages in the first place. So you can spam them, bad boys. As much as you pretty much want to get full uh, full advantage out of his HP attack plus plus uh, or a slash combo. So, how does this way make Tinas work? And is Tinas important for the Chaos Era? So, I mean, the thing is with Tinas is Tinas unfortunately is isn't really all that important. But Tinas 
is a fantastic character in his own right. He just gets all, even though he got very minor upgrades with his HP attack plus, like it's nothing like Cloud or Ultimecia levels of like EX plus and stuff like that. What he did get were some nice upgrades to help extend what Titus already does and helps him do it better. And that, you know, that with the increased stats of his EX plus, the, if you can get his armor to max EX, uh, his armor to max plus, you know, you have a rightfully chaos viable character on your hands. I'm still working on my Titus, as you can see. Um, but is he important? Like, should you like... Should this be a be all character that you just drop everything for to pull on to get his EX now, build him up and everything like that? No, not really. Like, again, he's a fantastic character in of its own rights, uh, but much like the rest of the Chaos era, um, you know, he's going to get power crept fairly soon, but he's still a rightfully good character in his own rights and he can still be used and you can still use him fairly well to help you get through Chaos stuff. Uh, one thing I do, 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 do want to mention, um, we are going to be seeing in the form of FEOT fairly soon on the global version. Um, JP has had it for a while now, and with FEOD, the resistances, the absorptions, the everything is going to be like dialed up to the max, and you're going to want to, you're going to want to have diverse team comms. So with that in mind, if you do decide to pull for Titus, good. You know, you need to have characters that diversify your teams and everything. And, you know, he's a rightfully good character. But would I say he's some someone that, you know, like he's a be-all, end-all character? Absolutely not. Now let's move on to Fang. The, you know, I guess, I guess you could say the main prize of the banner. Mm, I don't know. I think Tidus is a little bit better than Fang. But hey, 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 that's my, my personal opinion. Let's go ahead and talk about Fang. So Fang got a level 70 rework as well as you know, level 70 awakening and an ex plus so pretty much what her rework gave her was additional hits to her umbral vise which is nice oh god she needed that um it's still the brave damage potency on an umbral vise is still relatively low um so you really want to make sure you're hitting a, bro uh, a broken target as she has a her c65 increases the damage that she deals to broken enemies nice um her whirlwind works just about the same. The brave potency, uh, brave damage potencies are still just about the same. Um, it works. It changes to its uh, no. Um, it still works just about the same. If um, the target is broken or is being broken uh, or is already broken, um, when you use it, you will auto initiate the launch. So she still has to launch everything there. I think all she did really got was an additional usage uh, for her whirlwind. Yeah. Whirlwind was a, still a re was a relatively powerful skill. All she really needed on that was additional usage. Just brave damage, she, brave damage potency increases, which she you know she got she got that. Now her EX, uh, what it does is it is a four hit AOE single target um, <clears throat> HP attack in its plus form. It uh it does have a plus form. Uh, so the way its plus form works is it you have to use whirlwind. When you use Whirlwind, you'll activate the plus form of High Wind, which is the name of the EX ability. So by upon using Whirlwind, you'll activate the plus version of High Wind. Uh, the High Wind just has much higher brave damage potencies and has 200% overflow versus the, I was, 150% uh, overflow of the base version. Um, just some high brave damage potencies, attacks multiple targets, so uh, lots of overflow. Uh, what it does, and also I forgot to mention too before, um, Fang also now has a stackable frame buff that um <coughs> excuse me a stackable frame buff that does help work with the ex as well you do need your um you do need her to be at five stacks in order to have access to high wind plus which is fine you know you gotta get her started she uh she gains stacks of her frame buff by using both of her skills which is relatively nice um so that's not much of a worry. Uh, once you get it to the plus and you use a high uh, a whirlwind, you'll be good to go with high uh, high wind plus. And you're going to be shooting off a lot of whirlwinds anyway, you know, because that is her high damage, most high damaging skill. Uh, so you're probably never find yourself in a time when you're not going to be using the plus variant on like the final boss. You know, you're you're going to get her set up during the waves and everything. But basically, her frame buff, what it does is it increases her max brave and speed by ten and five percent. For, for every stack, and it permanently lowers the enemy's speed by 10%. Nice. That's a nice frame buff. Um, 
Now, for her plus, when it's at zero out of three limit breaks, uh, she now starts off the bat, uh, the match with two uh, with two stacks of the trend fangs of transgression. I believe the frame buff is called. So she'll start off with two of those at the start of the battle. Um, at one out of three limit breaks, uh, she just gets attack and speed up. Uh, at a two out of three limit breaks, uh, increases the brave potency of... No, 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 this, this is the third one. At two out of three, it increases the max overflow of the ability by 50%. Um, so it's now 200 for the base variant and 250 for the plus variant, which is the highest known overflow in the game right now. That's insane. And then three out of th- uh, three, it increases the brave damage potency as well as giving an additional hit to high wind to further help cap out on, you know, its damage. So, yeah, uh, Fang got a lot of very good upgrades. She got a lot of very good upgrades to her kit to help her perform a lot better. But the thing is with Fang is Fang is kind of that kind of damage dealing slash launcher that you really have to bring her to the right situation. Fang, much like Vincent, works much better in, against dual bosses uh, because... Mo- a majority of her kit works around attacking dual bosses. Uh, she gets she caps out on her stuff a lot easier against dual bosses because they're all AOE damage. And with that being said, a lot of the times you aren't going to bring her against a single target enemy. You're just not. Unfortunately, she just doesn't have, you know, the damage that other characters are going to have against, like, single target enemies like Cloud and Tidus, for example. Um... So, and unless you're bringing on, like, dual support just to super buff her up, just to make sure she's capping at all times, you know. And then another problem is, is I did forget to mention that she does get an HP attack and Brave Attack Plus. Um, the, the HP attack and the Brave Attack Plus, they, they change depending on the skills that you use, much like, um, much like Lightnings. But her Brave, da- her Brave Attack Plus does the same thing for both variants. And her HP attack plus is a single hit, single target HP attack, or a AOE single target HP attack. And it's really not that great. It's a very outdated. It's very outdated. It's very sad to see that she didn't get any additional upgrades to this part of her kit because it ruins her longevity. Because it's a very poor HP attack plus. She's not really she's not really suited for longer battles because the, it's such a wor- it's such a worthless HP attack plus that you don't even want to use it. You want to use the skill and make sure you're hitting overflow and things like that. So the thing with Fang is you really have to make sure that you're choosing the right thing. You're choosing the right stage to bring her. If you bring her against a duel or even a triple boss like we're going to see in the future, Fang will soar to new heights because you're going to be capping on the overflow that she's going to offer to the team and the damage that she can offer to the team like no other character can. Um, because you're if you bring her to a triple boss you're and you use high wind plus, you're always hitting that 250 overflow, which is going to cap at 99999. <clears throat> Even against a dual boss, most of the time she's going to be capping on that. So if you bring her against dual bosses while she doesn't have AOE damage, HP damage, the single target damage that she supplies is is good enough to warrant bringing her to a dual boss. So you have to make sure you're utilizing her in the best fashion. Is Fang important for the Chaos Era? Absolutely not. Honest to God, a lot of people think... That Fang is one of the worst characters to have brought, been brought out in the Chaos Era. Even our first two EX Plus releases before Fang, a lot of people think that they're leagues better than what she offers to uh, the roster of DFFOO. And <clears throat> not to say that I agree with that entirely, because yes, of the EX Pluses that we have now, she is indeed probably the worst. But she's not bad, guys. You have to use her in the right way. And that's the thing. Everyone in the Chaos Era, I'm going to scream this to the heavens. Everyone in the Chaos Era is usable and good. You just have to find the right time to use them. Fang soars in dual bosses. Triple bosses. So if you have a dual boss and you want a good DPS slash launcher, slap Fang on your team. She's going to work wonders. So you got to make sure you're utilizing her in the best of fashion. Now, for both Tidus and Fang, um, if you are to build them up, definitely, 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 Tidus must be two out of three. 
If your Titus is not two out of three, you might as well not use Titus. You can stop at two out of three because ingots and stuff are very scarce for now, but Titus needs to be two out of three. He needs that additional method to refre uh, refresh his frame buff. And Fang, I'm going to be completely honest, Fang needs to be maxed out 100%. To get the best out of Fang, you need to have her maxed out. The additional hits, the additional potencies, the additional overflow. She needs all of that. She needs all of that. So if you plan to build either of these characters, Fang must be maxed on her EX+. Plus, and Titus, for now, you can stop at a 2 out of 3. Because Titus is 3 out of 3. Uh, break just gives him a 150% overflow versus 120. Uh, which, you know, that is crucial. But you can also save your ingots and come back to him at a later time. You know what I mean? 2 out of 3 is the prime spot to stop for him. Fang needs to be maxed. It absolutely needs to be maxed. So the verdict for these two, not important by any means, but they're good characters to have, good characters. Titus, you you could slap Titus just about it against any boss. Um, Titus, thanks to his EX, works wonders against dual and single bosses, so he's a well-built all-around character. Fang, you just need to slap her against some dual bosses. That's pretty much that. We're going to be seeing quite a bit of dual bosses in the future, as well as a few triple bosses. So you can utilize Fang at her best of at the best of her ability against those. If you are planning to get ready for the Colorless Queen on Garland's, Garland's event in the next three days, no, don't bring her to that. Don't don't bring her to that. Um, but yeah, so verdict: Titus and Fang, no, great characters just need to be used in proper situations. So that'll do it, guys. Um, just a quick announcement. For the chaos stage that we just got with Fangs LC, uh, um, I don't know if I can actually do it. Um, so the team that I'm trying to run is is a team that I've seen a lot of people run before, just to get the complete. Um, and that is the team of Warrior Light, Sarah, and Cloud. And while I was able to clear it um, without dying in the end, uh, I was not able to complete it. Uh, I did not meet the HP requirement, the score requirement, or the turn requirement. Um, and my Warrior of Light and Sarah are not really built up to speed like these other people have been using them. Like, they're, I don't have the 90 CP armor for them yet, as I've been using the 90 CP armor on other favorites and stuff. My artifact farm went eh, not really that great for either of them. Um, it was pretty awful. Um, I'm looking to refresh Warrior of Light's um, artifacts when Garland drops with his event, and I'm going to be working with that and everything. So... It might be it might be a little difficult for me for for now, but my plan is to grab Garland and come back. That is my plan right now. So it'll be probably just a few days before we see my run on the Fang LC on the channel. Uh, just because I need to probably set up for this, as I do not believe I have the right right equipment to take it on for now. But that that is all. I just wanted to put that out there. If you were questioning where it is, that it will be out in a few days time. But that'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Garland's in three days. Uh, two, actually, two, two, two. He's in two days. I'm excited. I can't wait. And get ready for that pool video. I got some stuff. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.